What began as a small group of volunteers packing toiletries for state hospital patients grew into six strangers with one goal, to offer help wherever help was needed by giving a hand up rather than a hand out. Today, co-founder Glyn Wallman and her team have grown Angel Network into a 15,000 member strong volunteer organization. The call of Glyn Wallman and her team is for people to do whatever they can to cater for the constant needs of so many who have so little. The Angel Network is a non-profit organization run purely on social media. We assist orphan and vulnerable children in six provinces across our country with food, education, clothing and housing. We work with over 50 charities and outreach programs to assist these children. How the Angel Network came about was as a result of things happening in our country that made me feel very despondent. And, and I was looking for an answer as to how things could change, but I had no idea where to start. I knew what I wanted to do, that I wanted to give back, help people who needed help. And I think it was divine intervention. I really think the Angel Network found me because a friend approached me to help pack a Santa shoebox. But I've never been happy just doing one. I've always got to do more. So I approached friends, I put it on my Facebook page and I went to Joburg Jewish Mommies. And the next thing I had 65 Santa shoeboxes. And I thought, hmm, there's something here with social media. There's, there's something that can be used here. So I started speaking about possibly starting our own charity. I said, there's a lot to be said for social media. I think we need to look at starting our own Facebook page. And as they say, the rest is history. The Facebook page was born, the Angel Network was born. Run purely on social media, we get requests from orphanages, outreach centers, maternity homes, and we immediately put up the request on Facebook and we sit back and wait for the magic to happen. Our members then respond via social media. They either want to make monetary donations or in the case of where we're asking for things like school shoes, blankets, clothing, food, there'll be drop-off points that they'll deliver to and then we'll distribute to the places that need them. Nashua Children's Charity Foundation, headed up by Helen Fraser, have been instrumental in taking care of Banaka Keleni all the years and in making sure that the kids are looked after with school needs, school uniforms, bags, stationery, food. Little Steps then also came on board and helped with the things like the creche, the toilets, the fencing, the vegetable garden. And what's happened in the last few years, Lotto was helping sponsor Banaka Keleni. They've withdrawn that sponsorship. One year, in fact. It's been a year. Rose and her team weren't earning enough money to, make, to, to earn a living. They were doing it for the love of the children. And so they would get second-hand clothes, second-hand books, they'd sell them, and that would help them pay for themselves to be able to put food on their family's table. We were approached by both National Children's Charity Foundation and Little Steps to come on board and help out with things like blankets, jackets, backpacks, stationary food. And in fact, recently we made a donation of 25,000 Rand to help the staff here be able to earn a living. They can't work for nothing. They want to keep the center going, but they also need to live. We have asked our members now to do debit orders, which are now being put through monthly so that on a monthly basis, we can assist financially. Banaka Kaledi, stay ahead, stay open. Now these children who are here, it's a, they are orphans and vulnerable, vulnerable in the sense that some are abused emotionally, some are abused physically and otherwise. I wish you came when it was in a horrible state because now things are bad. And then we have a house mother, like a matron in our olden days who sleeps with the girls. Before they go to school, uh, they, 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 because it's small, you, you can see it. They, 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 they take turns to, to bath and then ready for, for breakfast. I never imagined the Angel Network would have almost 14,000 members one year down the line. So it's very hard to say where I see us going because we've, we've grown so unbelievably in such a short space of time. I thought we'd have a couple of hundred members. 
We are now starting to partner with companies like the Tomorrow Trust, Build the Future, Boys and Girls Club, where they are instrumental in starting creches and after school centres for children. And we are hoping to partner with them, get children from our outreach centres into their play schools, into their creches. And in time, we would like to develop training centres for children, for maths, for science, for accountancy, and then help empower kids to be able to find jobs after school, help them get into university, stay in university, and, and be employable and make a difference and give back afterwards. This is our kitchen area, and uh, it was horrible, I think during this two, two months ago. Ackermann renovated it. They put on these tiles. Otherwise, we had peel and stick tiles which were shifting. We prepare our meals here. All these are donations from supporters of the center. So the two ladies, Mrs. Shabalala and Chauge, prepare all the meals. And then uh, before they knock off, they'll sit with that, their dinner, is also ready so that they go to bed and then prepare their lunch boxes for the following day. The Angel Network could not exist without the kindness and generosity of its members. I could not do what I do without five incredible women who give me love, support, time, commitment. Our committee consisting of Haley Glasser, Janine Ways Broad, Lindy Katsoff, Bev Smith, and Giselle Wynick make up the team behind the Angel Network. And really, without the, the five of them, we'd be nothing. To me, Derek Eretz is, it's a way of life. It's a way of behaving. It's behaving the correct way. It's doing things respectfully and properly, I would, I would imagine.